Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're joining from. My name is Bruce Delmonico. I'm Assistant Dean for Admissions here at the Yale School of Management. We're, we're thrilled to have you participating in today's online panel. I hope you're all safe and well uh, and, and um, uh, do, doing, doing well during this, these very trying times. Um, I'm excited. You know, we're, we are right now in admissions and you know, getting ready to, to welcome the class of 2022 um, to, to uh, SOM this fall. Uh, in just a, in just a couple months, but at the same time, we are we're all looking to connect to members, uh, future members of the class of 2023. Uh, and in that vein, and for all of you who are thinking about uh, getting an MBA in general and and applying to Yale SOM in particular, uh, we hope that this session proves useful to you. Um, just to get to give you a sense of how the the next hour or so will, will proceed. So it's it's noon uh, U.S. Eastern time now. Will we will go through till 1 p.m. Uh, and uh, I, will, I will start by giving a, sh a short 10 minute presentation about the program just for those of you who are still learning and still getting a sense of, of uh, what Yale SOM is about. Um, and, but the bulk of the time will, will consist of question and answer with uh, two current students and two recent alumni um, to share their experiences here at Yale SOM um, and some of the things that I think make the, the, your time here at Yale and our MBA program uh, unique. Um, and just to get, kick things off, I would love it if actually our panelists could just briefly introduce themselves just so you all know who they are. And uh, just going down the line in, in my screen, uh, Abby, if you wouldn't mind starting, that would be wonderful. Uh, hey, Bruce. Um, thanks again for uh, joining us today. So my name is Adi Murali. I'm a rising second year here at SOM. Uh, I'm originally from India, but I uh, grew up in Dubai and Atlanta. Uh, prior to SOM, I was a technology consultant at uh, a software company called VMware. Uh, where I spent five years after doing my engineering undergrad at Georgia Tech. Uh, I came into SOM wanting to pivot into investment banking, and uh, this summer I'll be interning at Citigroup in the technology coverage group. Great. Thanks so much, Adi. I, I guess maybe going alphabetically, Bernie, would you mind uh, going next? Yeah, no problem, Bruce. Uh, hello, everybody. Good, good morning, good afternoon, depending where you are. My name is Bernie Loridan. I am a class of 20. 17 alumni, which is crazy. It means I graduated a few years ago already. Um, I, uh, pre-MBA, before Yale, I was worked in finance and did a little bit of work in education. Um, since leaving SOM, I've been at Bain & Company as a consultant based in San Francisco. I'm actually just uh, about to embark on a new job, though, uh, next week. Uh, I'll be working for um, an ed tech company called Lambda School, where I'll be leading their business operations function. So excited to join you guys today and uh, chat more. Great. That's, thanks so much, and congratulations, Brian. That sounds like an exciting new opportunity. Um, Jen, would you would you mind going next? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Jen. I am also a rising second year here at SOM. And um, prior to SOM, um, I did a few different things. I started my career in real estate consulting, then worked on cruise ships, and then spent the four years prior to SOM working for a celebrity chef in New York City during business development and strategy. Um, and I came to SOM to move to a different part of the food system um, and do sustainable agriculture investing, so impact investing and venture capital. And I'm interning this summer two internships, one with a sustainable agriculture financing startup um, that's helping farmers transition from conventional to organic. And the other is with a uh, brand new uh, venture capital that does more generalist VC um, that's disrupting legacy industries at the seed stage. Thank you, Jen. And Maria, uh, would you mind finishing it off? That'd be, that'd be wonderful. Sure. Um, so, hey, everyone. My name is Maria Fernanda, but you can call me Nanda. I'm currently the Prime Video Head of Engagement for Mexico and Spanish Latam. I have been at Amazon for around two years, and I first joined in the retail team, managing the sports, outdoors, and toys categories. Before coming to Yale, I worked at Procter & Gamble in Venezuela, which is where I'm originally from. So, hello everyone. Great. Thanks so much. And again, thank, I just want to thank your, the panelists for, for participating today, uh, taking time out of your schedules, uh, especially during this, this very, very unusual time. Um, we really do appreciate it. Uh, and hopefully we'll get through a lot of questions. Uh, obviously, uh, those of you who are on the session today, you're thinking about getting an MBA as your next step and, and obviously hopefully thinking about Yale SOM. 
um, as one of the schools you're considering. Um, just to let you know, this, this panel will focus more on the, the student and the alumni experience and less on the, the admissions process and the application process. Uh, we do have upcoming events that are more focused on admissions, um, including our application tips panel, which will be happening on August 7th. So definitely if you want something that's more focused on the application process and, and how to prepare for that, um, that session and some other sessions would be very helpful. I can tell you actually we, we will be, uh, hopefully you'll be getting an email today announcing our application deadlines for the year. The application should go live uh, next month in July. Um, so there's a lot happening for the, the class of 2023. Um, and also, uh, yeah, obviously, if you're thinking about applying this, this application cycle to start in the fall of 2021, uh, obviously there's, there's a lot that's uh, uh, happening now in terms of online learning. That's past semester and Addie and, uh, and Jen maybe can speak to that. This last semester was online. Uh, we, we're not sure what, what format the fall will take. Hopefully by the fall of 2021, things will be a little bit more back to normal. But you know, I think we probably will touch on some of the things that are happening now and, and how the experience has changed in light of, of, uh, of the pandemic. But, but hopefully talking about the more durable things that, uh, that adhere in the, uh, in the program as well. And, and to that end, I'd love to just talk a little bit about the program and some of the things that make it distinctive. Uh, when we talk about Yale School of Management, we always start with a mission to educate leaders for business and society. This was our founding mission. Uh, and it definitely does inform and I think animate really just about everything that happens at the school. Uh, it, it has a lot of different meanings, but I think at core it means that we, we have a very multi-sector mission. We have students, and I think as you, you heard from, from the sort of students alumni, lots of, lots of different experiences, lots of transitions, to, you know, pivots from, from one, from one uh, industry to another, from one sector to another, um, and we do have a very multi-sector approach. And I think we do attract st you know, students and alumni who um, think very broadly about the kind of impact they can have and the, the ways in which they like to be engaged in their organizations and their communities. And I think that the mission really speaks to that. Um, obviously, you're thinking about coming to business school because you're hoping to have a transformative experience uh, and really sort of ex either accelerate your current path or make a pivot to from wh where you are now to where you see yourself going. And so I think there are a lot of ways in which Yale can enable that and really can, can help you make with that transition can be in a transformative experience. And I think even from the introductions, hopefully you have a sense of how our our, our students and alumni have, have, have done that in, in their lives uh, uh, directly. So, so the mission is very obviously a very important part of the experience. And I think I'd like to talk about uh, just briefly three, three ways in which, and, and Sir Addie, Jen, uh, uh, Rhea, and, and, and uh, Bernie, you, you're probably very familiar with this. So we'll, we'll talk a lot more about these, these animating features of, of, the, of the school and how they support the mission. Um, and they really are to, to be the most integrated school with our home university to be distinctively global and to be the best source of elevated leaders across all regions and sectors. But I want to talk about those three aspects a little bit just quickly uh, before we get move on to the Q&A. So, so briefly, obviously when you come to Yale SOM, you're looking to get business skills, you're looking to take uh, courses that are directly relevant to, to a business career, uh, but we definitely feel and, and consistent with our mission uh, that to be a successful leader in, in the current century, uh, you need to have a much broader perspective and you need to draw on skills, not just the related to sort of business in terms of, you know, understanding how to, you know, uh, do a sort of discounted cash flow analysis or, you know, uh, to, to calculate weighted average cost of capital, but you really need to think more broadly about, uh, you know, issues that involve, for example, um, you know, sort of politics, law, the environment, uh, sociology, psychology, uh, they're all relevant to, to being an effective leader. And I think at Yale, you, you can get a broader set of skills. Part of that relates to how the curriculum is structured, which I'll talk about in a second. But part of it is the fact that the entire university is really open to you. Um, in, in our two-year program, the first year is mostly a core curriculum. And the second year, you take all electives and you can take them anywhere at the university without limit, which I think is unique among, among business schools. Uh, so any course, you could take your entire second year outside of SOM, not that I would recommend that, uh, but all those courses would count toward your SOM degree. And it really allows you to tailor your education to suit your interests. Beyond that, uh, you know, you, you, there are clubs and organizations that span the university. Uh, we have conferences here that, are, that, are, that happen that, that connect students from SOM and students from uh, across the university. So the healthcare conference I can think of most, most readily, but there are others uh, you know, that, that focus on sort of finance, real estate, and, and other, other areas um, that, are, that, are, that, that really connect students from across the university. Faculty often have uh, joint appointments at SOM in areas like the Jackson Institute or the Law School or the School of uh, Environmental Management. Um, and then, and, and perhaps, let's see, 
as importantly, um, after you graduate, uh, you are able to connect to not just the LSOM alumni network, but the broader university alumni network. And that really does allow you to amplify your network and connect with not just SOM graduates, but graduates of Yale College, in the law school, the medical school, uh, for uh, uh, the environment, uh, Jackson Institute, public health, uh, really across the board. So I think that's an important aspect of the experience, not just what's happening here at SOM, but your ability to connect across the university. The second, the second distinct feature I'd like to talk about is, is our, sorry, our global footprint, our global posture. Obviously now that's a little, looks a little bit different uh, because uh, things are happening virtually. There, you know, there isn't as much sort of in-person global travel and outreach happening, uh, but that is an important feature of the, of the uh, experience and something that obviously when, when the, the time is right, when the pandemic comes down, um, thing that will re return, I'm sure. Um, the, but there are opportunities even in, in this current state where we're, we're you know, um, more, more local, uh, more so people are sheltering in place or, or not traveling as much, still ways to connect globally through um, different means, especially our, what we call our global network for advanced management. That's uh, 30 plus top business schools from around the globe. Um, we are a founding member really kind of emanated from, from Yale. Um, uh, in normal times, uh, this, the, this network would be one of a number of different opportunities you would have to get global experiences. Um, in, so in person through, through trips, and I'll talk about that in a second. Right now, there are still opportunities to connect virtually. Uh, and we do, and we've always had those opportunities. Uh, and there are some, some uh, global opportunities or global components that are connected and, and baked into the core curriculum as well. But I'd love to talk about the global studies requirement, which we, which is part of the SOM experience. Um, this upcoming year, obviously, where we're, that might take a different form or might be something that is for the incoming first years is deferred to the second year. But for you thinking about coming in in 2021, hopefully by the time you arrive, this will be back in place up and running. Um, the idea is we have a menu of options that exist for you, some through the global network, so like the global network weeks uh, and global network courses that allow you um, to travel and, and get experiences in geographies that, with which you're not familiar. Um, the you know, global network weeks are week-long courses you would take at one of the other global network schools with students from other participating schools. Global network courses are actually online opportunities, so it's kind of a what we call SNOC, SNOC small network online courses, which are Compared to MOOCs, it's a really unfortunate acronym, uh, but I think it's almost, I think, so our, our previous dean, Dean Snyder, uh, uh, named him that, I think, because he kind of liked the, 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 the sort of that awkwardness, perhaps. Um, but those are sort of virtual opportunities to connect with students from other global network schools, and obviously those will, those continue even, even when uh, travel is, is less, less prob prominent and less prevalent a part of, of the academic experience right now. Um, we do have international experience courses. Uh, that was kind of the first global experience we had, uh, and those are um, student. You know, there's a faculty led um, working with uh, going with classmates, 20 or so classmates, to one of a number of different destinations around the globe. And then we do have more experiential opportunities, the global social entrepreneurship courses. Those are courses you uh, can take where you will. Um, there's an academic piece, and then part of that will be an actually live consulting project uh, with uh, with organizations from around the globe. And then we do also have semester long exchange programs as another opportunity to, to get that global experience. So during your time at Yale, you, you um, can choose from this menu, these menu of options to satisfy your global studies requirement. You, don't, you can do more than one. You don't have to limit yourself to one and people often will do more than one, uh, but it's a way to sort of get that global perspective that we think is critical to be an effective leader uh, for business and society. Um, so that's a little about the global piece. And then the final piece is, should be the, the, our, 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 our um, being the best source of elevated leaders across all regions and sectors. And uh, that really speaks to our integrated curriculum. Again, so we can talk a little bit about what the classroom will, will look like this fall, although hopefully next fall it will look a little more like this. I think for this upcoming fall, it might look a little bit different. Um, but but you know, regardless of the, the format, uh, that, that again, and consistent with our integration with Yale, our global, global perspective, uh, we have integrate, integrated curriculum that, that, that teaches core business skills in a, in a way that's different than other schools do. Um, a lot of the same material is covered, so I mentioned earlier, weighted average cost of the cash flow and discounted cash flow analysis. You will learn those things. Um, and we, we have um, modules in sort of microeconomics and accounting and statistics are the foundational courses that, that I, are, are, will help you level set and everybody get on the same, same, in the same place in terms of their, their, their background. But the, the, the really the, the, 
the heart of the core curriculum are what we call our organizational perspectives courses. And those are multi, multidisciplinary um, and sort of broad-based courses that really uh, take the traditional MBA uh, core curriculum and, and kind of uh, turn, them on, turn it on its side. So instead of looking at functional silos, the idea is to break down the silos and look across disciplines at the different stakeholders that you need to engage as, a, as an effective leader uh, and how, how you need to do so and how they're interrelated. And so it draws from uh, not just business disciplines, but in, again, consistent with the connection to Yale, um, you know, psychology and sociology and political science and other disciplines. It's very heavily team taught, so you will have um, a, a lead faculty member, but you also have you know, guest faculty coming from for elsewhere at SMI, but also other parts of the university to share their expertise. Um, it's heavily case-based, uh, but these cases are, are I'd say, 50 to 60% case-based um, in some traditional cases, but a lot of what we call our raw cases uh, that we've developed here uh, that, again, are, are different than what we call a, a cooked case that you would get at other business schools. The idea is that in a, in a traditional business school case, you get maybe a 10 to 12 page document uh, that takes all the relevant facts and distills them down for you, does all that work for you, and just gives you, presents you just the things you need to know. Um, the insight our faculty had is that that's not how you interact with information in the real world and probably in your jobs now. That's not how you inf interact with information. You're given an issue, you're given a problem, and you have to figure it out for yourself. Uh, and so you're given lots of, you know, you have to dig through lots of inf lots of pieces of information, lots of lots of data to understand what's relevant, what's not, uh, what to focus on, what what to, to ignore, how to reconcile maybe inc incomplete or inconsistent information. And that's how our cases are presented. You get the primary source material um, that you need to then work through yourself. So you know, 10Ks, 10Qs, uh, SAC filings, regulatory filings. Um, um, you know, uh, media reports, interviews with key stakeholders, those are all parts of the, our raw cases. And, and they're, not, they're not mediated by our case writing team. They're not sort of sifted through and, and boiled down by the case writing team. They're presented directly to you so that you have to learn how to make sense of the information yourself. And the idea is that those are very real world skills that you can get in the classroom. So even when you're studying in the classroom, you're getting skills that you can, you can use um, in, a very, in a very real way. Um, to give you a little bit of a sense of how the organizational perspectives class classes work, these are the perspectives classes. Um, I think the example that we tend to give is sourcing managing funds, which is the CFO function. And the idea is that beyond just finance, it will inc include strategy and operations and counting as well. So a number of different disciplines that, that a CFO, again, needs to assimilate and understand to be successful. Another example I tend to give is, the, is that if I can go back, the customer class, which is in the bottom or right of the screen. That, that is an, most analogous to a, in what a traditional MBA curriculum would teach as a marketing class. But in that curriculum, the marketing function you know, is seen as, again, it's very siloed, very functionally discrete. You learn the four Ps. Uh, it's very limited in its perspective. In our customer class, you'll learn the four Ps, you'll learn the marketing piece, but it really focuses more on the different parts of an organization that, that interact with the customer, that affect the customer's experience, and how you have to think of the, about them in an integrated way in order to have a positive influence on the customer experience. So again, it includes the four Ps, it includes marketing, but there could be accounting, there could be technology, it could be operations. If you have you know, a, a brick and mortar facility with a queuing structure, that's an operations issue. If you have a, 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 you know, a call center, that's a technology issue, the IT issue that affects the customer experience. If you have a sales force, um, how are they compensated? That's an organizational behavior issue that will affect the customer experience. So all these things are interrelated. So that's how we present our our, our, our core curriculum. Again, it, it really tries to break down silos, be much more interdisciplinary, and really sort of help you think more broadly about uh, how you need to think about different parts of an organization. So that's a little bit about the, the, the school. Obviously an important part of the experience, and I'm hoping that our panelists can speak to not just the things I've talked about already, but the, the, the community as well. Obviously being at, at a, a, a top business school, it's not just about the academics, although that's an important part of it, it's about so the community, it's about you know, interacting with individuals who are, hey, Bernie, there you are. How about that? Uh, it'll be interacting with individuals uh, who are, um, share their unique perspectives and can, um, and, and can, you can learn from your, your classmates as much as you're learning from uh, the, 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 the faculty and, and, and in the classroom. And, and I would say that, um, you know, as a, from an admissions perspective, we do, we think it's very important that you have, that we bring together a very diverse uh, uh, student body across a range of dimensions. 
uh, with the, the idea being that you will learn much more if you're interacting and 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 with 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 students with classmates who you know, think differently than you do uh, than if you are uh, interacting with people who already think the same things you do. You're not going to learn as much in that middle ladder situation. So we really want to bring people with different perspectives, different backgrounds, different experiences, uh, so that you can really share those with each other uh, and 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 grow in that context and not just in the classroom. Um, so. I also want to stop there. I think it may, might have gone a little bit over. I apologize for that. Um, if, I want to get to the question and answer, though, and, and, and get to the, the, our student alumni perspectives. Uh, if you do have questions after today, yeah, I know there are questions being submitted in the chat, and we'll try and answer as many of those as we can. Um, but clearly, our, our, the admissions mailbox number, uh, number, so showing my age, the admissions mailbox email box uh, is, uh, is listed on the screen. So feel free to reach out to us uh, and we will answer your questions as, as quickly as we can. Um, in the meantime, I'd love to, to turn it over to the Q&A if, if people are ready um, and just start uh, maybe Addy again, uh, if I'm not to pick on you uh, and I won't always start with you, um, but just starting with a little bit about um, your, um, your journey uh, to Yale, maybe just a couple of thoughts about why you decided to pursue an MBA. Thank you for giving your background, but why you decided to pursue an MBA and, and maybe what was it about Yale that, that, that caused you to, to, to join us as opposed to you know, uh, some, you know, some other options? Yeah, perfect. I can, I can go to that. So uh, I think for me, I was actually, like I said, in the technology space before SOM. Um, and um, I think the main reason behind me pursuing an MBA was uh, looking for an industry uh, pivot. So uh, I was working on a couple of projects where I was doing post acquisition uh, technology integration for some clients and got exposed to the world of finance and investment banking. Uh, so I did a lot of research on that, spoke to my friends on, on Wall Street, uh, and then eventually decided to uh, move forward and apply, uh, apply to business schools. So that was kind of one of the uh, main reasons why I thought of applying. Uh, then with SOM, there were many different reasons, maybe a, a few things that I can quickly pick out is um, one is I really felt like uh, SOM is, has a very non-traditional approach to uh, business school teaching. Uh, I felt like even during the application process, um, the application essay was a uh, your biggest commitment essay as opposed to a standard goals essay. So uh, I felt like SOM really strives to uh, really filter out smart and driven people, but those who are also humble and grounded uh, to the mission of the school. So I felt like that was a very good personality fit and even with the people I met uh, through the process. Um, yeah, that's. So that's one and then the other I'm sure we'll get into in more detail is also the finance club, which really helped, uh, which has been very successful in the last several years, getting people on, on the street. Uh, my interactions with them through the process also made me feel like S1 would be a great fit. Great, thanks so much, Addy. I don't know if anyone else wants to share a little about the reasons for, for getting the MBA in, 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 in general and then and for coming to Yale in particular. So um, I can go ahead. Um, working in Venezuela, I saw the results from incorrect ways of doing business, inconsiderate government policies, and really not caring about society. So I wanted to go to a place where I could learn from the best of how to, how, what is the right way to do business. So it's not just focusing on profits mainly, but also on the society and how to leave a good impact. That in the end is gonna be have more results in the long term. That's great. Thank, thank you so much. Um, love to, um, and uh, Bernie, I see you unmuted. I don't know if you have uh, additional thoughts as well. Yeah, no, I was going to hop in. Um, yeah, for me, my, my decision to go back to school was uh, probably closer to Adi's. I think for me, one big reason, uh, rationale to go back was I was also interested in making a career pivot. Um, so I mentioned I mostly had worked in finance uh, pre-MBA and I was uh, working in the insurance industry more specifically. And I knew that if I wanted to tr tr transition to something like consulting or something different, an MBA would be really helpful in terms of helping me pivot and giving me a lot more options. So a uh, very standard reason, like I'm sure many of you on uh, listening, uh, interested in make, making a difference, uh, different pivot. Um, a couple of things that stood out to me about SOM when I thought about my decision and I did have a few options to consider. Um, one was what Bruce kind of touched on earlier with obviously the mission. I think everybody can talk about that, but me particularly, I think you heard a little bit of my background. I said I work in finance, but I did some work in education. I always been interested in kind of multi-sector approaches to, to business. And so I always consider myself somebody that 
I knew would kind of transition from probably private to public sector, different types of industries, different types of issues. And when I thought about the, what is the school uh, and the programs is gonna set me up for long-term career success. So not just my first job out of school. I think a lot of people over anchor on, you know, just getting your first job out. But as somebody's a few years out, you realize, you know, the network's much more powerful than just your first job. Um, and so when I thought about what is the program, what is the kind of brand that I want behind myself in the long term, Yale became a really attractive option, just given not only our mission, but our connections across all industries, all sectors, um, not only finance and consulting, like a lot of people want to go into and, and what I did uh, after school, but even now moving into education, there's so many of my classmates and peers that I can call upon or uh, alumni that I can get advice on in terms of making the transitions that I'm looking to make. So um, I think that was one of the things that I probably wasn't, you know, probably is not talked about as enough, but I think the long-term path of where you want to be in your careers should also probably play a role in how you're thinking about your MBA decision. Thank you so much. That's a great, that's a great point. I think it's really important for people to think about. I think it is true that people, as you say, they tend to anchor on or maybe over anchor on the, that first job afterwards, but having that long-term trajectory uh, makes, is important. And then, and Bernie, I think, you know, your, your background, your description about your, you know, finance and, and education and, and then moving into consulting and now, you know, ed tech, um, it really is, we talked about SOM stories and I think that really is, you know, you know, you can see the mission come, so come alive in, in your, your, even your early career path so far, I know you're not too far out of uh, SOM, but even, even in this, the, your early career, the students seeing that, that the SOM story evolving, uh, so it's really great, great to see. Um, I'd love to ask another question um, that speaks to, um, you know, uh, the SOM community. And I talked a little bit about that, but the question is, how would you describe the SOM community? If you have any anecdotes of the experience that captures the culture of, of Yale SOM? And, and maybe, I don't know if, Jen, if I don't want to put you on the spot, but if you have a, a couple of thoughts there to, to kick off, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. Um, so I think an anecdote for me that I always think about is, um, at the beginning of the year, we have a series of uh, activities with the Career Development Office, the CDO, and one of them is this networking panel where all the second years um, represent where they interned for the summer and act as if uh, you're going to be having a networking event with them. And I was interested in transitioning into venture capital and impact investing and was applying to, at the time, a lot of um, during the semester uh, positions of uh, like venture positions and I started talking to one of the second years and said I you know I've never applied to anything like this before and I don't really know what to do with my resume and he he said well pull it out right now I'll look at it right now and so just in this middle of this big event he spent 25 minutes with someone he had never met before looking at my resume and helping me get it ready to submit that day so for me that was like um, that made me really feel confident that I'd chosen the right school and that I was I was at the right place and um, I think a really good indicator of what the community here is like and how people want to help each other. Oh, that's a great example. Thank you very much. Um, I don't, uh, I don't find there's, uh, Adi, I would say since you're, since, I mean, obviously, Nanda and, and, and Bernie, not our, our recent grads might have experienced uh, any anecdotes to share about uh, Adi, if you have anything you can share about the, the community and, 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 and something that you um, you've experienced in, the, in, the, in your time at SOM. Yeah, absolutely. So one thing I just wanted to pull out was uh, obviously Professor uh, Neil Buff, Barry Neil Buff uh, wrote a book on cooperation, which uh, talks about how it's important to like cooperate and work together with the people you may be competing with in some way. Uh, I felt like uh, one anecdote uh, I can think of is again, during the recruiting process um, uh, last fall, we have all the first years got together, created a Slack channel uh, for uh, investment banking recruiting. And I was just amazed with uh, just the amount of cooperation I saw across everyone, right? And uh, be it uh, marking together, sharing resources, uh, any questions from different coffee chats and interviews that trip them. And that really goes to show that together we're obviously a lot stronger and brings it close, ho close to home with the uh, SOM community and the mission itself. So I think that was probably one of the uh, important things when I saw that. Great, thank you so much. Um, and, and Jen, in your answer, you obviously you gave a, a, a career development um, focused response, and obviously that's an important part of the the Yale SOM experience. And uh, in, in coming to business school generally, you, you, it's a professional school. You're hoping to a lot of people are hoping either, as I said, either to accelerate their career path or make a pivot. Um, the career piece is an important part of that. Um, so I'd love to get a little bit of a sense of your experience with career services um, and 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 how that how that's uh, gone. And 
again, I'll, I, 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 I've used Jenna, you as a sort of jumping off point, but maybe, maybe Nanda, if you might be able to start and talk a little bit about your career search and career path, how SOM helped. I know a lot of times there's some more structured, you know, Bernie, you're going into consulting, it's a structured path, but a lot of people take a more bespoke path. Uh, so I'd love to hear maybe a, a little bit about what that, what that uh, experience is like. Yeah, I definitely took a bespoke path. Um, and so, you know, not recruiting for consulting or finance, there wasn't necessarily um, a structured approach to my to my recruiting and, and, and recruiting for VC and impact investing is very choose your own adventure. And um, you really have to be a go getter and be open to networking and, and coming up with ways to do that. But I still got support from the career, uh, this from the CDO uh, in a couple ways. And um, they have a lot of generic um, career services, like helping me with my resume and with uh, interview skills and that sort of thing. Um, but also if you find an advisor that you like, um, you can use that as a way to make your own benchmark. So I would put a meeting in my calendar with him every two to three weeks or once a month to basically hold myself accountable that I would have things to report to him and um, show him how I was progressing. And that just helped motivate myself. And um, and he was really great at kind of probing in what I, into what I had done and the decisions I was making. And um, and also when I came to the time to like choose between internships, he was really helpful with everything from negotiating salary to um, just figuring out if location was more important than the function of the, the job that I was taking. Um, so I, again, I, I had to do a lot on my own, but even still, I was able to, to use the services here at the same time. That's great. Thank you for that answer. And I don't know if, uh, if others uh, have additional thoughts about their, their paths and how the career services structure, you know, help them, you know, help you along the way. I know Maria, you've, uh, sorry, neither you have, uh, uh, sorry, I'm going back and forth with names, uh, <laughs> might have some thoughts. Yeah, sure. So for me, recruiting happened really different. I actually got a flash offer during my second month at school. Once I had my resume done, I went to an MBA career fair in Philadelphia and um, I knew I wanted to go to tech. So I started um, speaking with some tech industry there and I got an offer from Dell. So I didn't use the CDO much, but what I really used was speaking with my classmates once I got the offer to get a sense of what working in tech was and um, if that was something that I was really going to be interested in. So um, I decided to accept the offer and then I got um, a full-time offer. So I didn't do much recruiting, but what was really, really helpful was all the work that you put into building your resume during the first um, month. I remember that just making sure that every bullet was um, perfect took us a lot of work and the career coaches, which are second years, were always willing to help you to make sure that you had the right insights on your resume. I'll, I'll just add on here uh, a little bit for those who are interested in consulting. I know that's probably another popular field. Um, uh, similar to the finance and what probably Adi was mentioning, we have a, you know, a pretty big contingent of students that are interested in, in entering that field. So as Bruce mentioned, there is a ton of resources you're going to get access to. Um, both from the C Career Development Office and then through our consulting club, which, you know, I, I was a leader, so I'm a little bit biased, uh, but I would say it was probably one of the, the best consulting clubs of any top business school. And, and I, now at Bain, I had done not only um, recruiting for Yale, but I haven't seen other business schools, so I can pretty confidently say that. Um, I think that's one prepared students really, really well to enter that field. Um, we have tons of, obviously, alumni now in all different firms. Uh, our consulting club is really well uh, run and, and has a lot of, like, basically a whole curriculum that prepares you from, from the time you start on campus uh, to the time you have to interview to, to be as prepared as possible. And that's really in conjunction with the career development office. So we run things like alumni panel days. We bring back alumni for mock interviews. Um, the, which the Career Development Office runs. Um, we also have uh, a ton of different resources that we connect you with. So um, I can confidently say, you know, if that's something you're interested in as well, you would be absolutely well prepared. And I, I definitely 
felt confident in my decision um, from joining Yale and, and similar to Adi, very supported as well um, from the amount of time I got from second years um, who invested tons of time for my first year uh, to get me ready for my interviews for the internship to alumni who I connected with through the process. And, you know, as alumni now, I always try to pay, pay it forward. Uh, that's a big thing. So now I, I am on the other end where I, I'm, students are reaching out to me, current students in like Adi's year, and I try to help them with mock interviews and the like so it's a virtuous flywheel um but it's it's been fun to be a part of, of both ends of that at this point yeah thank you very much bernie and it, it is hopefully you um everyone gets a sense of it's very so sort of multifaceted the sort of the career search process obviously we are, our career development office has lots of st structured resources it's, it's a whole curriculum that you can undertake starting from the the you know orientation um in 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 terms of um, learning about so resume writing, so it's not a mentioned, and and sort of networking and and sort of interviewing um, to the in, you know, informational interviews to to the, the structured career search that happens in finance and consulting, but also the more more tailored searches that happen, and it's not just about you know career development office, but it's about sort of classmates, uh, second years, their second year advisors in the career development office, but there's also the clubs, which uh, Professor Bernie mentioned. Uh, and, and ways to connect with students in different ways, as well as alumni, uh, and, and and even you know I hear as I as I interact with alumni, I also hear faculty often are sources of of job opportunities. So it's really the entire community, and so hopefully you get a sense from these answers uh, a little bit of how the the career process unfolds and how it can unfold differently. And I think it's a nice balance here at SOM of you know being having the sort of the, the the traditional tracks that you can can undertake, but also being flexible and allowing for those individualized searches as well. Um, some of these, is the, the answers uh, did, you know, that you all gave did talk about, uh, you, know, you know, classmates and, and second years helping uh, and, you know, the support from the, from the community. And there actually is, I have some other pre-submitted questions, but there's one question that came up um, in the chat that uh, maybe speaks to this a little bit. Uh, and it, it has to do with, um, if I can find it again, the, um, the, the sort of the culture at SOM, uh, it, it, do you, in the question specifically is, do you think the Yale SOM culture is more collaborative or competitive? And please elaborate on your answer. So I don't know uh, if, uh, I welcome thoughts on that topic and maybe just to start off at Addy, if you wouldn't mind, you know, starting and then if anyone else wants to join in, that'd be great. Yeah, perfect. And I think uh, going back to what I was saying about the cooperation piece as well, uh, I spoke to a lot of uh, current students at other schools as well, as well as new admits more recently. Uh, and one thing I was very surprised about is how collaborative it is like throughout the entire process. Uh, even after getting into school, uh, we have a big club fair right in the first month. And I've heard even getting into clubs at some schools could be a lot more competitive, but obviously here uh, it's a lot easier. Um, again, the smaller size of the class allows you to really get to know everyone more personally. And it's very collaborative throughout everything from like clubs to the classroom. Uh, to recruitings. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Ex exactly what I expected based on what I'd had uh, conversations regarding uh, prior. And, uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks so much, Adi. I don't know if, uh, if anyone else has a, not a thought or two to share. Yeah, I, I would just, uh, in reflecting back, I've seen a few years out now, but I think uh, it's probably kudos to Bruce and the team. But I think one of the things that I think always there differentiates Yale students as well is like people have obviously are very smart and talented, but also have very high EQs. And I think um, something that I always uh, thought about in my decision as well, um, especially being a student of color and entering a, a new program was, you know, where, where am I going to feel like um, students have kind of a cultural awareness and where students are kind of open to learning. I think Bruce talked about like having obviously a diverse student body is really important to the mission. I think every school will tell you that. Um, what I think is different about Yale is, you know, orientation people come in to learning about, about difference. Um, and what I found is in my conversations as a, you know, admitted student and going to campus, there were just, there's an openness to, to the student body at Yale that I didn't find in other places. I think you, you'll find in, I saw in a lot of other schools that I was looking at, it was like kind of, you had this circle of people that always connect, you know, even though they had a, in aggregate, looked like a diverse class, there was pockets of people kind of who separated and segregated out, and there wasn't this intermixing. I think you, what I found at Yale, and this kind of leads to the um, point on it being definitely more collaborative, is there, there's an openness and a willingness and 
and kind of learning to connect with different people. And I think that led to the culture uh, that you know, a lot of what Adi was talking about. So um, if anything I would add is, is just that. I think that's a, kind of something that's hard to see on paper. You're not going to get from a website, or a, um, but just from being in the experience and now seeing it on the other side, I think that is something that differentiates the Yale experience. Great. Thanks so much, Bernie. And I think that, you know, that is obviously a very important part of the experience. And I, especially in terms of the, the collaborative versus competitive, just more, more, more generally, I, I, it was a couple of years ago, was, uh, I can't remember who specifically, there was, I was talking to a student who said that, you know, that, you know, there's a sense that there, there's the belief that, you know, Yale has some students because of the mission and because of, um, I think, sort of the, some of the careers that, that students go into the word, it's not, you know, competitive place. And I think the, the, the People are certainly are, are competitive, but they're, it's, it's, the, the, the way it was described is that, we're, that students are constructively competitive. There's a belief that people, everybody can be successful. It's not a matter of being exp successful at others' expenses, that everyone, we can lift everybody else up. And I think that's a, I know, from, from a, you know, observing from afar, and I realize I'm not a panelist, I'm, I'm the moderator, but observing from having been at the school for a few years, um, seeing, seeing that, 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 that mindset and that culture, that kind of uplifting and sort of inspirational approach I think is, 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 is wonderful and the fact that it does seem to, uh, in, in, you know, in, in here in, in each class and continue on from class to class. Um, so I, I'd love to uh, just look at some questions. We have a lot more coming in to try to get to as many as possible in the, the final 20 minutes. Um, it, we, I did talk about um, sort of the global piece and obviously right now things are a little bit, a uh, little bit uh, upended in terms of gl global opportunities. Um, but uh, those you know have existed and they they will return, uh, and so I wanted to get a sense of, uh, to the extent people are able to share, you know, what kind of global op opportunities you you were able to uh, take advantage of, and and sort of what what you know what what that experience was like. And I'll just throw that open. I don't know, uh, you know, for 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 Jen and Adi, I don't know if you've had a chance to to participate. <laughs> yeah, maybe Nanda, Nanda and I can can start. <laughs> Uh, I, I'll, I'll take a first crack. I, I was pretty active on this, you know, this was one of the things I really wanted to get out of my two-year experience uh, was to kind of see more of, of the world and travel a little bit. I was I know that's a little bit different now, but um, so I, a lot of those experiences that Bruce highlighted on that page, I think I participated in most of them. So specifically the, the um, international experience, which Bruce mentioned is kind of probably the most standard traditional one where, you know, you take part in a semester long course, usually focused on a certain area or region, and you study um, basically a certain topic related to that country uh, that's relevant. And then you spend usually a month or two like learning about it. Then you travel to that country um, and meet a ton of business and like social sector often leaders who uh, uh, to do uh, who like study that topic. So for me, I went to I studied J Japan. And uh, so I went there that I've never been to that. Re I never been to Asia. Forget about Japan. Uh, so it was a whole I, I kind of want to go as far as I could go. I was like, cool, like, let me go to the other side of the world. I've never done that before. Um, and so we studied sustainability. Um, that was the, the kind of the, the topic, but it was sustainability in a multifaceted way. It wasn't just like environmental, although that was one piece of it. It was also like economic sustainability. So Japan has probably a, a lot of people you know this is a long period of like stagnation and, and stagflation in their economy. So we learned about like, what are they doing to kind of prepare for their next generation of, of leadership. So we got to uh, study that. Uh, we had two professors who led that who were Japanese and um, one was from the School of Management, one was from another school at Yale who co-taught it. And we traveled all to Japan for about two, three weeks, met with tons of companies from um, tech companies to, you know, Nissan and Honda, like big names that you probably obviously already know. Um, and also social sector leaders, governments, banks. Uh, so it was like crazy. And then we got to do meet alumni who were in Japan and, and do a lot of fun outings. So it was an awesome trip. Um, I also participated in a couple of our global network weeks, which you also saw Bruce highlight. Um, those are kind of one week programs at another network school. Um, so I did two of those. Um, so I kind of, I used my full bank, I guess, but I, I went to um, IE in Madrid. Uh, for a week uh, during my first fall of my second year, uh, studied a uh, course there for a week. I met a lot of other students from basically like 10 other business schools. And then in my spring semester, I went to um, 
South Africa. I went to uh, went to Cape Town uh, and went to UCT University of Cape Town, their business school, and studied a course there for a week. So tons of global experiences, uh, all of which were awesome in different ways, different parts of the world. But I look upon those experiences as some of the some of my best times at Yale for sure. So. So I also did a global network week. In my case, it was in Israel at the Technion in Haifa. So that week was focused on entrepreneurship. So we had some classes around that. And we also had visits from top entrepreneurs from Israel. I mean, the classes were extremely interesting and also getting to know how a college works in another country is very interesting as well. And the classmates that went to the Global Network Week, we also did like a 10 days day trip afterwards where we got to um, know Israel. So we also had a fun aspect to it. And beyond the global, uh, global network weeks and international experiences that you have, there's also a lot of opportunities for traveling with your classmates. So it might be um, a good opportunity if everything gets better to also understand how people think differently and how they see the world differently. So with my classmates, we went to India, we went to Japan as well. So we also did a lot of traveling outside of school. Thanks, Nana, and thanks, Bernie. Those are great answers and great insights. Um, I'd love to, I have more of the pre-submitted questions, but I actually love to sort of mix it up a little bit and ask a question that came in through the chat, which I thought was interesting. We're talking a little good bit about the, you know, your experience at SOM. Uh, this question caught my eye, which is, what did you wish you knew before starting at Yale SOM? That was an interesting one to me, and uh, maybe, a, maybe a trickier one to, to come up with an answer on the spot, but love to get any thoughts, you know, and I don't know if, uh, so Jen or Adi, if either of you as current students, you may be closer to, to your time, um, if there are things, anything you wish you knew before you started at, at SOM. Sure. Um, I'm trying to think, I think one thing which, I mean, it's hopefully not, still not too late, so it's not too bad. But uh, when I came in, obviously, I heard a lot about the core curriculum, which is exactly what I expected uh, with the raw case approach and the perspective-driven curriculum, which was a great experience. Uh, I think one thing I was presently surprised by, after the first semester, I started doing some more research on the electives available at SOM. And you have some world-class world faculty uh, at SOM teaching the electives as well, which, uh, which was amazing. So maybe a few things that uh, there's a history of financial market fraud uh, elective, which is taught by uh, Jim Chanos, who's a legendary shot seller. Uh, then Tim Geithner teaches a class in, uh, in, this, in the fall. Uh, so there's some amazing electives, which I did some more research on and, and found. So um, again, not too late since I have the second year to take those, but uh, something I realized after I joined as to the wealth of electives that I swam itself uh, outside of the course. Thanks so much, Adi. I don't know if, uh, uh, if uh, Jen, Nanda, Bernie, if you have any other thoughts about things you wish you knew before starting SOM. It's, it's not something I didn't know, but I think it was something I realized <laughs> during the fact is just that um, there's just so much going on, <laughs> I think, at, at any one point in time that I think, uh, you know, I kind of knew that like business school is like a crazy experience, but I think one of the benefits and maybe the hard, hard thing about business school, especially at a place like Yale, because we are very integrated, you also get access and opportunity to take a part of a lot of things happening on campus more broadly, even outside of SOM. And so there's just so much happening all the time. Like, you know, it'd be, it'd be a random Tuesday and you're kind of going through and you're like, oh, I heard that, you know, the prime minister, prime minister of like, you know, Italy or something is like on campus across the street. And you're like, wait, what? And like, <laughs> and like that, that just can happen at a place like Yale. Um, and so it can be kind of overwhelming because you almost always feel like there's this consistent FOMO happening. Um, but that's kind of part of the process is kind of you learning to, I think for me, what I realized is like becoming a little bit more of like, how do you manage your own time? What's important to you? How do you kind of figure out what you're going to kind of do? Because you, you realize pretty quickly, and I'm sure Adi and, and Jack, it's, you can't do everything, especially in your first semester. There's a lot going on already. So you have to really quickly learn how to like, you know, uh, structure your time so you can uh, do everything and also get sleep and like, you know, maintain some form of sustainability. Um, and so I think that was one thing I didn't, I didn't fully appreciate till I got into the experience, I, I guess. Yeah, for me, it was kind of the same, um, that you're going to have to learn to prioritize. 
there's going to be, um, the first year is very intensive on classes and you also have to do recruiting. But then you have to decide um, how much um, time to dedicate to each one of those things. There's classes, there's recruiting, there's social events, which are also very important. So it's learning to prioritize. Even I think that's right. Yeah, I was, I was muted. Sorry. Uh, I, and I, I, the one, one um, to your to your point, Nanda, one one uh, faculty member, one point to to, to me likens uh, business school and SOM as a as a hot air balloon. A lot of times, you you re, it's what you throw out that allows you to rise, and so you definitely have to make those tough choices at times. Uh, and so and so I think that's part of the part of the whole experience and somewhat to that point This was not a pre-submitted question, but one that came another one that came in through the chat You know, we've talked about you know the experience at SOM and at the broader university, but there's also New Haven obviously we, we um, You know, that's that's part of the experience as well And I'd love to get any thoughts about from you about living in New Haven. I know Addie and Jen you're currently still in New Haven right now um, Bernie and Ananda a little bit farther away, but obviously had have, have your two years here any thoughts about you know New Haven uh, as a place to 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 live and and to to get your MBA. Sure, I I can start. Um, I, I will say I had kind of low expectations about New Haven, um, and I they've been kind of blown out of the water. I've really enjoyed living here. Um, it's very pleasant. Uh, there's great biking trails. I live in East Rock, which is um, just very neighborhood feel and close to great places to go running. And I I really enjoy outdoor exercise. So that's been really great for me. And there's also just like a thriving restaurant scene and, um, and the winter wasn't nearly as bad as I, I was scared that it would be. So um, yeah, I've been really pleasantly surprised with, with how much I've enjoyed New Haven. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, Bruce, just to add to that, uh, I mean, echo Jen, and then a couple of other things is um, also the fact that New Haven is obviously a big college town. So, um, the big thing is you also come across like students at SOM and at Yale uh, day to day, week over week, which is a good thing. I think uh, you end up spending a lot of time with them and getting to know your class a lot better. Uh, and then the flip side, I also like the fact that New Haven is still close to all the big cities. So it's just a train ride away from DC, Boston, or New York. Uh, so it's still great for recruiting uh, and to be there for any, for any interviews or such uh, in person. So um, I think it's, it's a good uh, best of both worlds, yeah. Yeah, for me, it was also the perfect mix having New York an hour and a half away and being forced in a good way to be with your classmates throughout the week. In big cities, I mean, you go out of school and there's always people visiting or restaurants to go. In here, you were, again, forced in a good way to get to meet your classmates, which is one of the biggest things that I was looking for in doing an MBA. Since everybody talked upon it. I think uh, I just I'll just double down what Nanda said. I think that was one of the biggest things for me. Um, I went to NYU for undergrad, so I had the opposite experience of like being in the city city. And I, don't get me wrong, I had a really great time there. But one of the things I was really looking forward to is like how do you actually be in a program where you get to know your classmates? And I think New Haven offers that really nice balance of like a lot to do. There's you're not going to get bored. Um, I, I found myself actually not going to New York nearly as often as I thought I was. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll go to New York like every weekend, but there's a ton of stuff to do in New Haven. So I actually ended up going to New York, New York maybe like once a quarter, like once I actually got on campus. Um, and so there's a lot to do, but you actually get to know your classmates, which I think is really a special part about my. Thank you all. Those are wonderful answers and great, great, great perspectives. Um, we have a few minutes left. I would like to maybe return to the academic piece briefly and just uh, just ask, um, what was uh, what class did you find most memorable or has been most memorable so far um, or most beneficial to you? Again, Adi and Jen, you've, you've only had the, the one year so far, but if there's anything you want to share and, and certainly Nanda and Bernie, if you have thoughts about sort of the academic piece and memorable classes from your time. For me, it was um, strategic leadership across sectors. It's one of the most popular classes and in each class, the professor brings a CEO from very um, important companies. For example, during my year, we received the CEO from Shake Shack. I actually spoke directly with Marisa Mayer before she left Yahoo. Um, we got CEOs from Ford, from a lot of companies. And the good thing is that the professor 
asks really tricky questions that put the CEOs in a hotspot and he doesn't really care if they make if it makes them uncomfortable so you learn a lot from how they react to the situations and what they answer yeah I, I should probably take that one uh, in the second year I think for me I briefly mentioned it but uh, uh, this class called history of financial market fraud by uh, professor Jim Chanos and he's again uh, He's in the industry. He has his own investment advisory firm uh, that focuses on short selling. Uh, I thought, I think this is really unique and one of its kind across other business schools where it focuses on uh, going past over the last 200, 300 years, uh, the different bubbles that have happened and different financial crises that have happened. And then taking a really forensic approach to see what caused them and what kind of, uh, uh, kind of characteristics of a firm cause uh, fraud to breed in a way. So I thought that was very interesting. And similar to what Nanda said, uh, there were a lot of guest speakers who were kind of in the forefront of calling out the shots on some of these companies. So it was very interesting to hear firsthand from them on how all of that went down. So that I think was one of the best classes I took this past year. Um, yeah, so uh, as, a, as a first year, I've only taken three electives so far, but I absolutely love two of them. I took um, Renewable Energy Project Finance, which is cross-listed with the Forestry School and is considered by a lot of people the best modeling class um, at SOM. Uh, so that was fantastic. Um, and then also I took private capital and impact investing with Sue Carter, who what is a veteran in the space. So both those classes are taught by uh, like visiting professors that are in the, the industries that they teach. So both were, were fantastic. Um, and then as for the core, I would say that um, I enjoyed all the courses any course taught by someone from the econ department, um, that's a really strong department here at SOM. Um, they're all like tell great stories and like clearly I work really hard to make you laugh. And I, I think I learned a lot um, and a lot of frameworks that I've actually like by my like Porter's five forces. Like I use that probably more than anything else in, in my internship. So um, I, I think those are some highlights of, of my first year. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're coming just a couple minutes left. And one last question that I uh, post to each of you, just tying it back. We've talked a good bit about the experience here at SOM uh, and, and what I think what's distinctive about the school. Um, tying it back to the application process, obviously we have more opportunities to talk about this in future events, but um, if you could give one piece of advice to someone who's applying, what would that, that piece of advice be? And we could just maybe go around uh, and, and um, so I guess I, Addy, I'll pick on you one last time if, you, if you're willing to start and then maybe go around to each of the panelists and just give one thought if you, if you have it. Yeah, uh, sure, Bruce. So uh, with, I think for me, um, uh, I started thinking about uh, business school uh, maybe a year or so before uh, the application itself. Obviously, uh, everyone may not have that time, but uh, why that helped me was because I started really focusing on uh, polishing my resume, what can I do from an extracurricular perspective, what additional responsibilities I can take at work, uh, maybe take the GMAT a few more times if, if I need to to get the score needed. Uh, and I felt like just having, starting a little bit early, even before the application, uh, kind of helps you think big picture on uh, polishing the whole application. So I thought that was helpful. I, I can go. Um, you've probably heard this before, but I think being authentic in the application um, is a piece of advice that people give you and you, you always start to sit there and think, oh, but like, what do they want to hear? But after meeting all my classmates, like it's clear that people really do come from all different industries and backgrounds and that it's, I, I think it's much more interesting to the admissions to like tell your story. And I, I always just was unapologetic about my kind of odd path. And, um, and, and I think kind of here in, there's not really such thing as being like unique in your being different because there's so many people that are different. Um, and so just telling the story and being really confident in it is important. Yeah, so for me, I agree with Jen. I believe it's finding what's that special ingredient that you can bring to the class. Um, when I first joined, I thought that I was a system gap. <laughs> I really didn't understand what I was doing there. My classmates were all so smart and impressive. But then you understand the reason why you're there. So as long as you're being unique and you're bringing that something that's special from you, that's going to be good enough. 
Yeah, sorry. Uh, I'll I'll kind of ditto a lot of what everybody said, but I think my final piece of advice, yeah, is really understand the why. Um, I think what uh, Adi was saying is really important. Like, take the time to put yourself in the best position in terms of like put your best application forward. But really, I think what it comes down to is like understand what's the why of your career and your arc of your story. And uh, for me, that was really understanding what's not just like what you want to do right out of school. I think that's important to know. But I, frankly, I think from an admissions perspective, they're more interested in understanding what do you want to do long term? Um, how do you want to make an impact on the world? And then how do you how do you think that translates to how you can make an impact in the school? I think if you focus on that within your story, I think you'll you'll get a lot of the out of the application process. That's great. Thank you. That was all wonderful advice. Thank you so much for that. We're right at the hour mark. So I wanted to take a moment to thank the panelists, Adi, Bernie, Jen, Nanda. Uh, thank you so much for participating uh, and I really appreciate your sharing your insights, Adi and Jen. Uh, good luck on the internships for this summer. Uh, uh, Bernie, Nanda, good luck with, with the, your ongoing work and, and Bernie, congratulations on the new role. And so we got you at a, a really <laughs> wonderful time, a really wonderful transition. Uh, so it was great to be able to, to share that uh, with everyone. Appreciate everyone's participation today. Hopefully this was a helpful session. Again, this was mostly uh, focused on sort of the, 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 the student experience uh, and, and, and getting a sense of the, the school itself. We do have upcoming admissions events. I mentioned the August 7th application tips panel. There are also weekly Q&A sessions and other, other uh, panels with students. So look forward to your participation on those. I'm sorry we couldn't we get to as many questions as we could. I think we got through a good bit of uh, material. Sorry we couldn't get, get uh, to everything. Please email us if you have a question that you, we weren't able to answer and we will get back to you and look forward to continuing uh, to engage you throughout the process. So thank you to the panelists, thank you to the participants. Again, stay safe, be well, have a great rest of your day. Thanks all. Thanks.